How effective has social distancing been at slowing the spread of COVID-19? Di Fan Huang looked at US infections data to find out. Hello, Di Fan. Welcome. Hello, team. How is everything? It's okay. Now, in your research that you did, Di Fan, um, you are talking about social distancing. What policies do you mean by social distancing? Yes, in the United States, the federal government issues social distancing recommendation and dedicate health authority within states and counties to determine the mitigation procedure. And the state government announced and enacted different policies, among which include the general category on the state of emergency, physical distance closure, and the state of home. There are many other specific policies for each general category, among which the most important five policy are gathering restriction, restaurant restriction, school closure, non-essential business closure, and stay-at-home orders. So we focus on the stay-at-home order and use the date of each county announce this order as a day with social distancing begin. Of course, our results are robust to the different choices of state government policies. Our general assumption is that social distancing reduces the spread of infection. What's the assumption here? What's the assumption in your model? Yes, so we assume there are two possible mechanisms in determining how social distancing reduces the spread of infection. The first one is the direct effect of policy. The social distancing includes the stay-at-home orders is likely to decrease the interaction between the infected and the suspected population. And the second effect is that uh, indirectly of this policy, by raising the awareness of the virus, so the people may take more protection measures. Therefore, it's very problematic to estimate the effect of social distancing with uh, the complicated mechanisms. To be more specific, there exists a reverse causality between the social distancing and infection growth. For example, the state government choose to enact restriction because there is an increase in infection. There also exists voluntary precautionary effect. As the COVID-19 outbreak are publicized, people may voluntarily take precautionary before any government restriction go into place. Moreover, there is this anticipation effect when government announce the policy ahead of time that will change people's behavior. And also we consider the spillover effect from the state traveling restriction that the effect in one state may affect the growth rate in the another state. So our approach is innovative and flexible by taking into account all these factors that could influence virus transmission over time and across counties. And it's also robust to the above issues. And you did your research in the US. What time period did you look at for the transmission of the virus? So we focus on the date from January 20th to April 20th, 2000, uh, 2020. As many states reopened the economy starting from April 20, therefore, we do not consider the data after the, uh, April 20 that may confound our analysis. And you're getting the infection data right down to the county level. Where did you get this data from? So we get the data mainly from the New York Times website. Of course, there are some missing value in this uh, database. And we fill up the missing value with the data from the CSSE from John Hopkins University. And we also cross-validate our results with COVID tracking project. So we can make sure that the county level data is also accurate in our NFS. Now, it's not enough, clearly, to just look at what the regulation is. You have to measure compliance with that regulation, don't you? So can you explain a little bit about how you measured that? Yes, we use a daily change of population mobility data as a way to measure how behavior of social distancing recommendation in each individual and in each county. We get the data from two companies. The first company is from SafeGraph, and the second company is from the Place IQ. So the data we uh, use from SafeGraph to calculate the completely at home ratio and the median distance traveled, and the data from Place IQ to show the device exposure index. So how the two databases uh, get the people's behavior? They have the precise location of each individual's cell phone pins. So can, they can know where you are in the last 24 hours based on the cell phone pins. So it's highly accurate and highly representative for each individual in the United States. So let's have a look at your results. So what's the overall result, Deepang? What is the impact of social distancing on the spread of the infection? 
So we find out the, over the whole sample period, the average effect of social distancing reduced the daily infection cases by 12% during our sample period from January 21st to April 20th. The social distancing policy started to reduce the daily infection cases from the fourth day since its enactment, which is consistent with the virus incubation period about four to five days. And it's also associated with 8.8% reduction after the first one week and about 16% re reduction after two weeks and 15% reduction in the daily case after three weeks and 23% reduction in the daily case after four weeks. So you still can see that the social distancing policy is become more and more effective after the time flies. Now, I notice you're also looking at the effect uh, by income, by race, by education. Um, why do you, why does this matter? Because the virus doesn't know what my education or my income is. Uh, of course, the virus does not know our income, our race, our education. And uh, what we want to know is not about the virus, but about each individual. We investigate possible heterogeneity in social distancing effectiveness based on individual's characteristics, including the income, race, and education. So the policymaker need to identify whether and to what degree different individuals benefit from the social distancing policy and to determine future policy that is equally benefit to all lives. And this is what the research is about. Uh, and did you find large differences by these categories, yes. yeah. I, I, yes. yeah. How can you explain that? So for the income education, the effect ranging from the weakest from the bottom quartile to the strongest for the top quartile. That is to say that um, the people with the bottom income and education is less least effective in the social distancing, while the people with the highest income and education have the most effective by the, uh, by the social distancing. For the race, the white people at the Asian major county are significantly larger than those for the black and Hispanic counties. And we believe this is partly explained by the individual's willingness to enact social design policies themselves. It is also related with the pre-existing health condition and the economic condition of each individual, because individuals with more wealth are less affected by the income and health shock that is brought by the uh, social distancing and the COVID-19. I also see in your paper here that you're looking at the effect of political affiliation. I think I know what you're getting at here, but what's your reasoning? What did you find about that? So in pre evidence, documents county with more Trump voters are less likely to enact the social distancing policy, and the political beliefs have a substantial impact on the effectiveness of county-level social distancing response. So we use the county level presidential election returns in 2016 from MIT election lab as a measure for political heterogeneity of each county. The social distancing policy is larger in reducing the daily infection for democratic counties than Republic ones. The progressive effect of media viewership during the COVID-19 can also cause important economic and health implications. So we use the data from Nielsen Monthly NLTV in 2015 and calculate the Fox News coverage heterogeneity for each county. So the effect are relatively smaller for residents with more Fox News exposure than those residents with more CNN News exposure. Now, these are really interesting results, Fang, but social distancing is already used by, well, everybody as a, a policy. So what do we learn from this that's going to be useful? Yes, the COVID-19 disease triggered an unprecedented social distancing worldwide to reduce the spread of this disease. But the effective of such policy is unclear. So my paper provides very strong statistical support on its effective as the policy reduced the spread of COVID-19 by 12% in daily average reinfection and suggests the effort to flatten the curve indeed reduce the virus growth rate both in spatial and the temporal. But our, our results also highlight immediate attention on the social defense policy for Black and Hispanic communities to achieve a similar effect for the white and Asian community, 
And we also call for special care from the health authority to communities with lower income and lower education to mitigate the spread of virus with greater magnitude. Now, you're studying in Australia, I believe, and you're uh, in China at the moment. These are two countries that have had very strict social distancing policies. From what you've learned in your research here, does that make you confident that these were good policy choices? Yes, I'm confident because I have experienced two countries' uh, restriction by myself. So in response to the outbreak of highly contagious disease, this government has issued unprecedented restrictive policy. For example, in China, it enacted a total lockdown of Wuhan city on January 23rd of 2020, and subsequently a national shutdown. I came back to China in about uh, middle of January 2020 before the national shutdown. I have to say that lockdown in China is very, very painful, but it's highly effective in reducing the infection. As for Australia, they shut down the international airline with China in the February 1st, just the exact day of my flight back to Melbourne. And later, Australia also enacted a social distancing policy since April and are effective in flattening the curve based on my classmates and uh, colleagues' experience. We hope this policy can help you and British people fight against the virus and in the new year. And uh, God bless you. Well, Deepang, this uh, pandemic definitely has a, a long way to go yet. It's what we're seeing. So uh, thanks for your research. It looks like uh, the things that you found out are going to be very useful for policy for quite some time yet. But thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. The paper's called How Effective Is Social Distancing? It is in COVID Economics 59. Well, thanks for watching. As ever, you'll find plenty more new research on the impact of COVID-19 in COVID economics. Free and open access at cepr.org.